and welcome back to Whiskey Racing. In this video, we're going to recover that headliner behind us. Uh, never did this before, so this should be interesting. I'm just trying to make the car presentable, not perfect. Uh, but we're going to do our best here, and I'll show you the steps involved in uh, recovering a headliner. So the first thing you want to do is pull off the old fabric. Uh, if you see this side, a lot of it's already fallen off. So you want to pull it off. Just work your way around. So all the material's pretty much folded up here. We're gonna flip this back over. See it's falling off. And we're just gonna pull the material off. Just like that. Don't mind my messy garage. Here's what you're left with. Um, a lot of this is old glue, old foam where it's darker. You wanna get it down to where it's yellow, where it's just clean foam like that. So the next thing we're doing is cleaning up this uh, foam backer board. You want it to look like that. You want to get all this old glue off, all this foam off. Uh, so when you put your new material on, it has a clean surface to stick to. Uh, like everything with paint and body work, prep, prep, prep. Prep is very important here. So uh, let's get this cleaned up. Comes off rather easy, like I'm just using a brush. See how quick it comes off. You have some harder to get off areas. I do have a little brush on my drill. Have the drill turned all the way down on power. You don't want to rip it up, but and you can see that takes it right off. Uh, one thing you are making a lot of dust, as you can see, so have your shop vac ready for cleanup. And then after you clean this off as well, I'd recommend going over it with the shop vac just to pick up any, any loose particles that are still on there. All right, so we're getting there. I know you guys don't want to watch me uh, clean this for however long it's going to take uh one thing i found when you have your brush don't be afraid to push i mean don't crush the stuff but you know you can put a little pressure on it and keep going over the same spot and what i've found like in here it just doesn't want to come off you can feel how hard it is i don't know if it's like foam so that's where the drill comes in nice and slow I did turn the speed up on the drill a little bit. It seems to be working a little better, get some of the stubborn stuff off. Uh, just be careful if you do that. I have seen where people say you can use a sanding disc on this. That scares me that I'm just gonna rip right through the, the backing material here and put holes in it. Um, so yeah, I did turn the drill speed up. Just take your time. I mean, obviously this side looks better. We're getting there, but uh, we're just gonna take our time and get it done. All right, so I said earlier in the video about people using a sander and I don't trust it. I still don't. But I have been doing this, it's 220 grit, just doing it by hand. It seems to be getting off any hard, uh, hard to get spots that the brush just isn't getting. So I'm back in the garage. Uh, one thing I didn't really see people talk about, but I wanna make sure I get, cause I don't wanna have to pull this off, is this is where the material wraps around. There's like old material and I guess that's glue, kinda like what we took off the other side, the whole way around here. So we're going to clean that up just to make sure when we pull the material around it has a nice clean surface to stick to. So the winner for cleaning up the side of this, uh, the underside of this here where the material attaches is a wire brush. Starting with a small one, a little bit of elbow grease comes right off. Thanks to my buddy Jim for the tip. Beers and Gears, check out his son's channel on YouTube, lots of good content over there. So thanks again Jim, I'm going to finish cleaning this up. Alright, so that's kind of the finished product here, it's not 100% done. Uh, it didn't go too bad. One thing I will say is give yourself some time for this. It's one of those things YouTube makes look easy. Uh, I guess I should say quick. It was fairly easy. Uh, it's just time consuming. You try to get it right. I'm still... I want to clean up here a little better. Uh, but I'll show you a couple imperfections here that we're going to have to fix. So if you look at it right there, I appear to be missing a piece of the headliner, which is still attached like a loose tooth, I guess. And that's actually the screw hole for that side for where the interior rear light mount. So that goes like that. And then over here, you can see it's still kind of dirty because when I pressed on it, it went like that. So that should be there. That should fold up there and that's your slot for your seat belt to go through. And then also right here on this side, well, it's been, it's kind of soft in there and there's a bit of a tear as you can see. I think that's what was falling down. I believe that's from getting wet there, the T-tops. All right, so we got our resin, our hardener, some uh, fiberglass matting. We're gonna start repairing this. Head. All right, so we're gonna be making our repairs to the back of the headliner here. I already mixed up the 
the resin and the hardener. So what you want to do is you have these in place. Make sure you don't knock the headliner out of place. Like I have this lined up here pretty nicely. I always put some uh, some resin over that. Where we're going to stick the piece of fiberglass like so. Position our fiberglass over it. Make sure I had this. Don't glue it to your fingers. Same, I've done that. Maybe I have. Press it down in place. It helps if your gloves fit and these don't. And then you're going to saturate fiberglass matting with the resin. Uh, you can paint. I just sort of dab it on there. Hang it over it like a paintbrush. So that may be overkill, but it gives us good coverage a couple inches past. Uh, should stop that tear. It's about even right there. I don't know if I can just fill that in with something and make it make it whole again. All right, so we got that piece on there. It looks ugly, about what I expected. Uh, got some stray fiberglass there. I think that'll give me an edge. Maybe I can build that up a little bit, or it's enough for the material. I think that'll tuck up, but at least it's not going to bend in half anymore. All right, so the repair set. That's nice. This one actually came out really well over here. See, it's still a little flexible enough to get the seatbelt in. That added some rigidity. I don't know if I did that right. Looks like there's air under there. I should say that other side's as good as it's getting. Uh, you can see here my repair. It's not quite flat. That's going to be under the lights. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, over here, set up nicely. So we're going to vacuum this down. I am worried about like these lines here. If that's going to show through my material because it's not a flat uh, surface. So we got the material kind of laid out here. Uh, they actually make headlining material with uh, like foam on it. This doesn't have foam. There's a little bit of a back on it. Um, let's see here. It's just like, I don't know. But uh, the top side is uh, like a velvet. Uh, use any material you want. The reason I went with this in particular is, uh, like I said, this is my mother-in-law's car. So back in the day, my father-in-law had a 1970 Dodge Challenger. And this is the material that was on the headliner. And my wife remembers it uh, being a little kid. And she'd... Uh, like right stuff in the headliner. So we're going with this. So obviously you want to cut the material a little long so you can fold it up under the headliner. Uh, these scissors better work. They're fabric scissors. I paid $18 for them. So uh, we'll see how they... I'm sure it's me and not the scissors, but like when I cut, I feel like I'm hacking at it. So I'm glad this is getting tucked because yeah, this is horrible. But it's slowly starting to take shape here. So I put some paper down on the table just so we're working on a clean surface. I have it cut out very loosely to how it's going to fit. And we're going to try putting it. We're using 3M headliner adhesive. Uh, spray an even coat on the padding and then on your material as well. You've got 30 seconds to 15 minutes. It says till it dries. We're going to do one half, do the other half tomorrow. Looking at the can here, there's three settings. Low, medium, high, depending on, uh, I guess, how wide you want to put the spray of the... Adhesive, we're going to try medium and with that, fold half your material back, coat all this, and lay it down. I don't think I trimmed this well enough, but we're going to see how this stuff kind of sprays on like silly string, so let's give it a go. I did change the nozzle. The better you trim, the better it's going to turn out. I literally knocked the can off and broke the thing, and I got a little bit of adhesive right there. It's going to make me not so happy, but for my first attempt, it's on there. Like, this is way too much over here, so... The more accurately you can trim in the first place, the better it's going to look. I will say that, and I didn't get like in there yet, so we're going to pull some of the, the wrinkles out, and that's about right where we stop. All right, so here we go. You can see on the front area of the material folded over. Um, again, if you trim this better, this is a lot easier. So I'm going to have to like trim that down, fold that back. Uh, and here is where it kind of gets tricky. Um, you got to make some relief cuts in here so you can fold it up and over at the corners. But you can't go too far back. You're going to see the cut when you fold it. So we're going to do that next. So you can see here I made some relief cuts into there. That's to go around the bend there. Kind of pull this up and over. Pull this up and over. I need two hands here. Give me a second. You make the relief cuts and then you can make the bend around the T-top. So another thing here, earlier in the video, I talked about the repairs and I put some fiberglass there because it was creasing. It's nice and solid and I don't know if it just moved the, this way or I picked it up. Of course, it ripped there, so that's no cool. 
All right, it's done. It's definitely a 20 footer. We're not getting any closer. It's pretty bad. Seriously though, here it is. Uh, you can see I trimmed really poorly. As you can see the different, the varying lengths. Uh, you can see how I did the relief cuts for the bend. Uh, that didn't turn out too bad, believe it or not, especially this side. Um, we're gonna have to flip this over, uh, see what the top side looks like. Uh, there's the finished product. And uh, honestly, it's not hateful. Um, it's, I got all the contours pretty nicely, trimmed around. Um, should vacuum it, it's a little dusty, and I got some adhesive up here, hopefully the visor's that, and there's a little adhesive I got there, because, well, apparently I can't aim a spray can. All right, so that's uh, my first attempt at recovering a headliner. Uh, I'd probably give that a five out of 10, six out of 10, definitely a learning experience, one being the way it was, three being push pins holding it up, 10 being a competent shop doing it. It's not horrible, it's not great. But it's going in a uh, street strip car. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's better than the old backer board flaking off down in your face and the material hanging off. And I learned something and you know, I had fun doing it. And uh, you know, as you go along your journey, anything in life, especially hobbies, if you don't enjoy it, don't do it. I mean, it's not gonna be perfect. You don't have to be perfect. Uh, just do your best at it, have some fun and uh, just keep getting better as you do it. So anyway, as always, thanks for tuning in. Thumbs up for the video if you liked it. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't. And uh, maybe I'll see it in a upholstery shop when this falls off in two weeks. Later.